Something that every guinea pig owner discovers is that keeping guinea pigs isn't as simple or easy as it might seem. And when we have our busy lives to contend with, it's easy for guinea pigs to fall down the list of priorities. <laughs> But this video isn't here to point fingers or to name and shame, instead to highlight five bad habits that us piggy owners should be aware of and how falling into them could mean we are inadvertently harming our piggies. Which I know is the last thing any of us want, but none of us are perfect, me included. I've been guilty of some of these habits from time to time. So I also want to talk about some of the ways that have helped me make good care habits part of a routine that is less stressful and easier to manage. Manage. So hopefully you and your piggies can have a more smooth running life. Does that sound better? She's still judging me so much. Where should we plunk you? There you go. And our first bad habit is to do with cleaning. Because let's face it, guinea pigs poo and pee a lot. A painful amount. Basically since owning guinea pigs for a long, long time, ever since having two in a tiny cage to four, then three in this big cage, I've never really felt comfortable with having a day where there's no cleaning. There is just so much mess, especially if they're inside, they will start to smell. And if they're outside, smell's not an issue, but the dirt is still there. We we all know we need to clean on a regular basis, but something that can help give us the motivation to make it a consistent part of our routine is bearing in mind the consequences of not cleaning. If we don't clean enough, there's a higher risk of our guinea pigs getting infections and suffering from long-term health problems. And depending on the style of cage you have, ventilation and the risk of upper respiratory infections can be something to watch out for. These are an infection in our guinea pigs' lungs that can be difficult to get rid of. And living in dirty surroundings where there's lots of ammonia in the air off the urine and there's bad ventilation in the cage, especially if it's quite enclosed, can make the risk of these infections higher. Another one is UTIs, which is urinary tract infections. And if our guinea pigs are sat around in their own pee and poo, there's obviously more bacteria in their environment and there's a risk of this getting into their urinary tract and causing painful urination, piggy squeaking when they're trying to pee and blood in the urine. In. These kind of things usually need a course of antibiotics and vet visits to sort them out. Another one that's not so pleasant is called bumblefoot, which is an infection of the foot pad, and this can be caused by urine scald, where urine essentially burns the skin on the bottom of their feet, and again, it makes it easier for the bacteria to get in there. The good news is cleaning doesn't have to be a big job, and I'm not saying we should be cleaning out the entire cage every day. Simple things like sweeping the cage and having a litter tray you can clean on a daily basis really work for us. For me, these three things help me keep the cleaning tasks easy and simple. A brush, spray, kitchen roll or toilet roll and the litter tray. And my routine is to basically sweep the cage in the morning, again when I get home from work in the afternoon sometime, and then again just before bed. And at one of these times, usually morning or evening, I also change out the litter tray. So take out the newspaper and hay, pop down new fresh newspaper and pile in some fresh hay. And if any of the pads are looking dirty in the cage, I'll also switch these out for some fresh ones. All of this on a normal day takes me five, 10 minutes maximum. And it means that all the poops from that day are removed and any of the pee hotspots are also changed out as well. Our second bad habit is not providing enough hay. Are you demonstrating? You're being a very good model. This stuff is without a shadow of a doubt the most important thing in our guinea pig's diet. And because it's kind of brown and boring looking, it might be easy for us to underestimate the importance of hay. We might think to ourselves, it doesn't matter if they go without for a few days before I stock up again, or it doesn't matter if I forget to fill it up in the morning before I'm out at work all day. But the truth is guinea pigs need hay all the time. I kind of think of it as the hay mindset. So when you think guinea pigs, Instead, think guinea pigs plus hay. Without hay, our guinea pigs basically aren't getting the fibre they need and their diet is imbalanced. Pellets and fresh food are no substitute for fresh, good quality hay. So make sure your guinea pigs have fresh hay all the time and top up the hay at least three times a day. If that sounds like a lot, chances are you're not giving them enough hay. So for me, even though there's hay still left in the cage, I'll top it up with fresh hay in the morning, when I get back from work in the afternoon and at night time before bed. And this is usually at the same time I'm doing the sweeping and the cleaning anyway, so it doesn't really add any extra time. 
time on. And as for making sure you've always got enough hay in, there are some subscription services out there, especially from websites that market their hay at guinea pigs and rabbits. A good one in the UK is Haybox, and that's where I get my Timothy hay from, and I do have a referral code for them, so I'll pop it down in the description below. I also get some hay from a local pet shop of mine, and I always make sure to go out and get extra hay whenever I'm down to the last quarter of a bag, because that last little bit always goes down so much faster than the new stuff at the top of the bag. Our third bad habit is neglecting to change out the water. Especially if we've got younger piggies, they might not seem to drink that much, if anything at all, and that is fairly normal. But they will still drink something, so the water in their cage needs to be fresh. If you remember what it's like to take a sip out of a glass of water that's been hanging around since yesterday or even earlier, it tastes different and it's not pleasant. So we don't want our guinea pigs to associate that with their water bottles, which is the only source of water they have. If they're thinking the water isn't going to taste very nice, then chances are they're going to drink less of it. And having stagnant water in there that's been there for multiple days can mean bad things for tummy bugs and other health complications. So make sure you change out the water in those bottles every single day and if you have bowls with water in you might need to do it more than once a day. Bowls tend to get other things falling in them, poops, which can make the water manky and not the healthiest. So for me I always change the bottles in the morning and it is literally one of the first things I do. I check on the biggies, say hello to them, see how they're all doing and then I change the water bottles. Simple as that, it is just ingrained as part of my routine. I do it before I get myself ready, before I get in the shower or anything like that. And because I made such a habit out of it, it just happens without me really having to think about it. And my other piece of advice when it comes to water bottles is to invest in one of these, which is your bog standard bottle brush. For a lot of years, there was this advice going around, which was kind of cool and a bit hacky about putting dry rice into water bottles, shaking it up and down, and it clears out the algae and any debris that's in there. And the rice trick does work, but in reality it is a bit of a pain. You're there trying to get rice in the bottle, it's spilling everywhere, you shake it up and it doesn't get to the bits that you actually want it to and then it gets stuck in the spout and basically it's a faff and takes longer than it should. So with one of these, if I see the bottles looking a bit grimy then this sorts it out in no time. You can pick these up from basically anywhere and I think I do have them in my Amazon storefront links in the description below too. Next up is some piggy personal hygiene and grooming and I'm thinking specifically nail trimming and butt hair trimming. You heard me right, butt hair. And with nail trimming, yes, this is something that many owners dread, but with time and practice, you will get more confident and you'll be happier to do it on a regular basis. If you are new to it, then I recommend checking and trimming their nails every two to three weeks. That way you can just take off the very end of the nail and you don't have to put your piggies through too much stress if you're trying to chop loads off. But if you neglect to trim back the nails, they will overgrow. And what they tend to do is curl around, making it uncomfortable for your piggies to walk so they get less exercise and are less healthy in general. And also if they curl back on themselves and rub up against the foot pad then they could lead to bumblefoot which I spoke about earlier which is an infection of the foot pad. So I just quickly wanted to show you Pedro's front feet. As you can see, they are all sort of twisted over to one side, his little paws and his nails. And that's because Pedro was neglected for we don't know how many years without having his nails trimmed until he was rescued by the RSPCA. And he actually had terrible bumblefoot. And all of that did leave him with his little twisted feet. Fortunately, I don't think they affect him too much these days, although he does seem less keen to jump into beds, he doesn't get in the hammocks as much as the girls, so it's probably just made him that little bit less agile than he could have been. And of course this does make it more tricky for me to cut his nails as they are so curved and over to one side, and he absolutely hates having his feet touched. And if you do struggle with nail trimming, you can always take them to the vets or to a local guinea pig rescue and get them to help you with it. Or you could just ask a friend or a family member, someone who at the very least could come around and help you do it because it is easier if there's two of you. I also do have a video on the best nail trimming techniques with these human nail clippers. So if you want to see that one, then I will pop it down in the description below. And whilst we've got Pedro here, the other thing as far as grooming is concerned is keeping on top of trimming back 
but hair. Obviously this affects long-haired piggies and semi-long-haired piggies most, but some short-haired piggies can also have surprisingly long hair around their rear area. And it's this hair that soaks up pee, picks up poops, picks up hay, and basically becomes tangled and matted, which can lead to skin problems as well as urinary tract infections. I'm sorry to hold you up like this, buddy, but as you can see, Pedro is quite trim around his legs and his bottom as well, just like that. And that is the easiest way to manage long-haired piggies. You can keep the hair long on top, down the sides, but underneath around the bottom is where you need to keep it short and it will make it so much easier for you. Just like the nail clipping, it does take some time and practice to get confident at it. So I also have a few hair trimming videos which I'll pop down in the description and you can go and watch those, especially if you've got long-haired piggies. Now we've already spoken a bit about hay, but with other foods, it's a bit different. And bad habit number five is not feeding the right amount of these other foods and especially fresh food. I get a lot of messages about how much to feed, what is a good diet in terms of fresh food for guinea pigs. And it is really confusing. There's a whole list of different fresh foods they can have from grass, fresh forages, all the different types of vegetables, fruits. The list really does go on and on. And the general rule here is everything in moderation and don't feed too much of any one thing at once. The main reason being is because our piggies have quite sensitive tummies that can react badly to suddenly having an influx of loads of one type of thing. A key culprit is grass when it comes to springtime and owners let the guinea pigs go out and have as much grass as they want all day long. This can cause a really bad upset leading to bloat and gut stasis in guinea pigs. And as for pellets, we already know we should be getting a brand that's made for guinea pigs, has extra vitamin C and avoids selective feeding. But we should also bear in mind how much pellets we're giving our guinea pigs. A bad habit is to just fill up the bowl every day, it never gets empty, they can gorge on them as much as they want. This is not ideal, especially if your guinea pigs really love their pellets and eat loads and loads of them. And the reason why is because they'll fill up on pellets and eat less hay as a result. So you can follow what it says on the packet and don't give any more than this, or what a lot of people do is actually feed less. Most brands will say do feed unlimited pellets when your guinea pigs are young and still growing, which most people still tend to agree with that. And I think the best thing to do is to get one of those little scoops that you see some people have so you can measure out the amount that they should be having during the day. The things in this video have all revolved around the active care routine we have for our piggies and I hope you've picked up some good tips and ways to improve your own routine. But there are mistakes to be made in other areas including the stuff we put in our guinea pigs cage. Especially when we are constantly bombarded by companies marketing products and claiming they are suitable for guinea pigs when they actually aren't. So I'm going to pop this video up next for you to watch, which is the 10 things guinea pigs don't need and you shouldn't consider buying, including some dangerous things you should never buy for them. But that's all for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support of the channel as well. It really means a lot. We will see you in the next one. Bye bye.